In case you haven't heard, there's a new miracle fuel that's about to change the world. We are talking about green hydrogen. If you believe the hype, green hydrogen has the power to solve climate change by creating clean fertilizer, powering heavy industry, and transforming the shipping sector without a single lithium-ion battery in sight. But there's a catch. To produce it, you need loads of these and these, which could kind of defeat the purpose. Still, there are plans afoot, and this $10 billion mega project may be one of the most ambitious schemes yet for producing the hyped hydrogen. In doing so, it could turn this remote area of the world into a clean energy superpower. So is green hydrogen really the best thing since sliced bread, or is it all just hot air? While green hydrogen may sound like the latest environmental buzzword, hydrogen, of course, has been around since, well, the start of the universe. And its use as a fuel here on Earth is nothing new either. In 1804, the first combustion engine was powered by hydrogen. And in 1842, Welsh scientist William Grove pioneered the first hydrogen fuel cell. Today, as climate change worsens, hydrogen is once again being looked at as a way to light the fires of industry without cooking us all to death. But this is where some new terminology comes in. It's time for a quick science lesson. The most common way to produce hydrogen is by using fossil fuels to heat natural gas and steam in a process known as steam methane reforming. This is called grey hydrogen. Almost all hydrogen today is produced this way, and it's not going to be any help fighting climate change. A variation on this process seeks to capture the CO2 emitted during the process and store it underground. This is called blue hydrogen, and realistically, it's not much better than its grey cousin. Green hydrogen starts off with water, where an electrolyzer passes an electric current. This breaks the bonds between the hydrogen and oxygen atoms, allowing the hydrogen to be harvested. Now, green hydrogen only accounts for a tiny amount of hydrogen production, just 0.04% in 2021. One big hurdle that green hydrogen faces is that the huge amounts of electricity needed from wind and solar dramatically reduces the locations that would make production viable. Enter Namibia. This southwest African nation could soon be home to sub-Saharan Africa's largest green hydrogen production plants, known as Hyphen. So Namibia is blessed with natural resources. It is one of the top two, three locations in the world for co-located wind and solar. At this stage, you can't do wind-only or solar-only facilities. You need to have the combination together. Typically, you want them in the same place. So if you wanted to build this project in Germany, for every wind turbine you put up in Namibia, you'd, you'd need to put up two to three in Germany. Once it's complete, Hyphen will cover 4,000 square kilometers of Namibia's coastline. And by the time it's fully operational in 2030, it'll produce 350,000 tonnes of green hydrogen every year. A whopping 10 billion US dollars of investment is going into creating this plant. That's roughly the same size as Namibia's entire GDP. Here's how it'll work. Water is going to be drawn from the sea and desalinated here. That water will then get pumped to an electrolysis site powered by wind and solar. The hydrogen then gets pumped back to the port where it's exported. The strength of Namibia's natural resources enable Hyphen to be completely independent of the national grid. And in fact, Hyphen could eventually send surplus energy into the country's national energy mix. But hang on a minute. If Namibia has such abundant wind and solar, why use any of that energy to make green hydrogen at all? Why not just stick with electricity? Well, while it's possible for green hydrogen to power our cars and heat our homes, it can play a much more crucial role elsewhere. Currently, batteries and electricity can't provide the enormous power required to fuel heavy industry, such as steel and concrete production. But green hydrogen has the ability to fill that gap. The shipping industry is responsible for 3% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, but powering container ships with green hydrogen could cut that close to zero. Green hydrogen is still expensive to produce, but a lot of that premium comes from it being a new technology. Industrial electrolyzers are currently an expensive component, but their price is expected to fall as production is increased. There's an enormous scale-up across the entire value chain 
So if those supply chains can respond appropriately, you should see a further cost reduction in the cost of solar and the cost of wind, which already come up sort of 80 to 90% of where they were 20 years ago. But really the big cost driver that needs to fall is the electrolysis part, which to compare it to solar and wind is just sort of 10 to 15 years. And that's really what's going to drive the cost. So green hydrogen may well be the miracle fuel of the future. But for it to fulfill its potential, there's an immense job in scaling up production. Hyphen could be a good trailblazer, but it's a drop in the ocean for what's needed. If you look at independent re research, not, not our numbers, of what hydrogen volume is required in 2050, you need somewhere in the order of 3,000 of our projects. That's an enormous number. So at the top end of, let's call it the, the net zero 2050, what needs to be done for that is quite is quite daunting. But um, you know, when man stood on the ground and looked at the moon, it also looked daunting and thought it was, it was an impossible task. Don't forget that we're raising awareness of construction's mental health crisis and supporting charities in this space through our Get Construction Talking initiative. There's a video series on our channel and you can find support or donate over at getconstructiontalking.org. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you subscribe to Tomorrow's Build.